my wife and I prepare to embark on our upcoming tour of the Gambia, Ghana and Nigeria, I did just want to take this opportunity. UK Prince of Wales now head of the Commonwealth, due for Banjo. In contravention to, of the 40 meter buva on the highway and other issues affecting the timely ex execution of the project. Road construction for the OIC faces major setback. Air pollution affects over 90% of the world children daily. These and more coming on your way on the World Today Noon Bulletin. It's 14.03 GMT here in Banjo and in the British capital London where Prince of Wales has just departed. Destination the Gambia as he embarks on his first visit to Commonwealth countries since he took the mantle of leader of which many believe is a new colonialism organization. In uh, coming one week, the Prince will visit Gambia, Ghana and Nigeria. In the Gambia in particular, he will visit the Commonwealth War Graves Cemetery located at the outskirts of the capital, the British Full Funded Medical Research Council, etc. In a video ahead of his visit, the Prince talks about his memories of previous visit to West Africa and looks forward to the forthcoming visit. Let's take a look, please. As my wife and I prepare to embark on our upcoming tour of the Gambia, Ghana and Nigeria. I did just want to take this opportunity to send you all our special greetings and to say just how much we are looking forward to meeting so many of you. This will be the first visit to the Gambia for us both, although we have heard so many wonderful things about the beauty of its natural environment and the resilience of its people. And we are especially pleased to be able to join you in celebrating the Gambia's re-entry into the Commonwealth earlier this year. I'm also delighted to be returning to Ghana, which I first visited more than 40 years ago, and to Nigeria, which I last visited 12 years ago. On this occasion, I'm so pleased to be introducing my wife to some of the places that I remember so well. The United Kingdom's uh, relationships with the Gambia, Ghana and Nigeria are firmly anchored in our shared history. But today, our forward-looking partnerships that strengthen each of our societies and our economies. I need hardly say that my wife and I greatly look forward to celebrating with you these vital bonds between us as members of our remarkable Commonwealth family. There is, it seems to me, no greater demonstration of these ties than the dynamic Gambian, Ghanaian and Nigerian diaspora, uh, their communities which call the United Kingdom home, or at least one of their homes, and act as a bridge between our countries, across which travel the ideas, creativity and talent that fuel our shared prosperity. It therefore gave my wife and myself the greatest possible pleasure to meet many members of these communities at a reception we held recently at St. James's Palace to celebrate their contribution to so many areas of our national life. Hearing such impressive things about the many ways in which people are working to strengthen the ties between our countries and about how much it means to so many people that they are British Gambian, British Ghanaian or British Nigerian, gave us both tremendous pride. As a result, we much look forward to meeting as many people as possible during our forthcoming visits. And bearing in mind the very special memories I have from 40 years ago, to re-experiencing the irresistible attractions of high life and Afro beats. 
It will therefore be a great joy for my wife and I to see you in Banjul, Accra, Kumasi, Abuja, or Lagos very soon. And we know that we will bring back with us a host of special memories that will stay with us always. That was UK Prince of Wales. Gambian authorities will in coming days issue a 14 days notice to property owners along a 22 kilometer stretch road at the outskirts of the capital city. With barely one year to go for the successful hosting of the OIC summit, the country continues to face challenges in the meeting the infrastructural development that one needs to host the global event. Our own Sajo Sambu attended a press conference organized by the team set by the government to oversee the organization of these events and filed in this report. The Secretarial Road Reserve Committee has said they will issue nothing more than 14 days to business vendors and landlords affected for the demolition of the new 22-kilometer road expansion project from the shitting corner to the airport junction via traffic light. The CEO of the Reserve Road Committee, Bandin Silla, made these remarks today at a press conference held at the OIC Secretariat in Bijilo. The conference, which was aimed at sensitizing the general public through the media about the impending road expansion project from sitting corner to airport Johnson via traffic light as the country prepares to host the Islamic conference in Banjul next year. Banden Silla of the Reserve Committee during the briefing shared the committee has been engaged in the prefaciability, the execution of the project and some impediments have been encountered along the process. A stop work notice has been issued to all active construction sites along the road corridor between Sting Corner and the airport junction. To this effect, the public is hereby notified that a notice will be issued by the Department of Physical Planning and housing to all occupants within the 40 meter reserve along the 22 kilometer stretch of the road. All those served with the notice should contact the Department of Physical Planning and bring along any relevant documents within 14 days. On that note, Silla stressed that with construction sites along the highway between sitting corner to airport Johnson has been the public will be issued a notice by the physical planning and housing to all occupants within the 40 meters reserve along the 22 kilometer stretch road. The road reserves committee has noticed the presence of commercial billboards and outdoor <coughs> advertisements along the road. The owners will be duly notified for the decommissioning and relocation of the billboards. Used cars dealers displaying their cars within the 40 meter boover of the highway will also be impacted <coughs> by the work expansion on the highway. The OIC is an agency of the government and that the reserve committee which comprises of eight government arm is a stakeholder in the development of the country towards the preparation of the OIC summit to be hosted by the Gambia, said the OIC advisor Almami Fandental. This he noted that the impediments along the shared area will be served in notice and that those who acquire their lands legally, government would negotiate and see how best to compensate. And those that have not gone through the right authorities, the law will be implemented. Mr. Njai explained that if you are on the right of way and you have no authority to be there, the law will deal with you. If you are there and you have every authority to be there, then discussions and some creativity would be expected from our designers of the road to see how best we can deliver these projects without being uh, held up in litigation forever or pay unreasonable uh, amounts of compensation. I just thought that it would be very important for us to understand that context. These projects are going to be delivered so that this country moves in the right direction. In that effort, there are laws that we are all governed by. Anybody who is not uh, observing those laws would be uh, at the uh, mercy of the law. For Africa TV News, I am Sajo Samu. Chancellor Angela Merkel has announced on Tuesday the launch of a 1.14 billion US dollar fund to support private investments in African countries. 
Speaking at the G20 Compact with African Conference, Maka pledged to ease financing burdens and support African countries' development objectives. Leaders from Benin, Ivory Coast, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Guinea, Morocco, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, Togo and Tunisia attended the conference, hosted by the German Chancellor in Berlin. In a press release issued from UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi must be investigated in an independent and impartial manner to ensure a full examination of an accountability for the human rights violations committed in the course of what she called a shockingly brazen crime. Speaking to reporters in New York yesterday, UN spokesperson Stefan Dujaric said Bachelet welcomed steps taken by Turkish and Saudi authorities to investigate and prosecute the alleged perpetrators of Khashoggi's mother, but added that the bar must be set very high to ensure meaningful accountability and justice for such a crime against a journalist and a government critic. For human rights, um, in a press release issued today, she said that the murder of Saudi Arabian journalist Jamal Khashoggi must be investigated in an independent and impartial manner to ensure the full examination of and accountability for the human rights violations committed in the course of what she called a shockingly brazen crime. She welcomed steps taken by the Turkish and Saudi authorities to investigate and prosecute the alleged perpetrators of Mr. Khashoggi's murder, but she added that the bar must be set very high to ensure the meaningful accountability and justice for such a crime against a journalist and a government critic. The High Commissioner called for, on the authorities in Turkey and Saudi Arabia to cooperate in ensuring that the full truth is revealed about the murder and that the rights to the truth and justice for his family and the public at large are fully realized. And she did, uh, she did say for an investigation to be to evidence and witnesses would be highly desirable, but it was not a call for an international investigation. She also underscored the need um, for forensic examination and for the Saudi authorities to reveal the whereabouts of the body of Mr. Khashoggi. Coming up, Turkish airline to begin twice a week flight between Banjo and Istanbul. Fear over electoral rigging rocks Zimbabwe as the country. Yesterday, after listening to Prime Minister May's assessment of the state of the negotiations, Amal Foundation, in collaboration with the Supreme Islamic Council and IOU, presents Mufti Ismail Mek on his Building Bridges Tour at the Bakau Independent Stadium on Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. Lecture topic, Respecting Differences. Entry is free. Gates open 11 a.m. Mufti Ismail Menk in the Gambia and is sponsored by International Open University, Paradise Suites Hotel, BBC Quality Design, Freedom Properties, Jumbo Spring Rolls, Jaoil Company Limited, Gamsel, QTV, Alphala Radio, iAfrica TV, and GRTS. If you don't feel the love in your heart for one another, you are sick. over electoral rigging rocks Zimbabwe as the country yesterday after listening to Prime Minister May's assessment of the state of the negotiation <laughs> 
din Muhammad di jodi ko fekk yene tibi sallallahu alaihi wasallam mu ngi taxaw mu tok jankon why it is our diocesan patron feast day is because the cathedral of our lady of the assumption is dedicated do not have it in their mindset or in their psyche that we are playing against algeria Welcome back. You're watching the World Today Afternoon Bulletin. Turkish airline to begin twice a week flight between Banjul and Istanbul. A move that the country's ambassador said will not only increase people-to-people -people interaction and business relationship between Turkey and the Gambia, but also will further connect the Gambia through the hub of Istanbul with the rest of the world. For more, we go with this report. On the occasion of its 95th independent anniversary, the government of Turkey through the Banjul Embassy has committed to expand bilateral relations with the Gambia, this time in the aviation industry. The Turkish ambassador to the Gambia, Ismail Sifa Yusir, made these remarks at a reception organized by the Banjul Embassy as part of events marking the country's 95th anniversary of self-rule. Turkish Airlines, according to him, will start to operate twice a week direct flights from Istanbul to Banjul starting November 26. The proclamation of Turkey as a republic took place on the 29th October 1923 under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, whose vision for a prosperous and democratic country still guards the nation. At this 95th anniversary of the pro proclamation of our republic, I commemorate all our heroes, in particular Ghazi Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, leading our victory on the war of liberation and the foundation of our new state. I express our gratitude to our members of parliament making efforts for the liberation, development, growth, and the strengthening of our country as the representative, representatives of our national will since the first assembly up until now. The sacred memory of the members of our security forces and citizens who lost their lives during the fight against terrorism and on July 15th will forever remain in our nation's heart and maintain their place in the identity of our state. I see each step, each step we have taken towards an advanced democracy and a strong economy in our efforts to carry our country beyond the level of contemporary civilizations as a light kindled for our glorious future. The date marking the end to the rule of the Autonomy Empire is considered the greatest symbol of peace and stability for Turkey. I strongly believe that the direct flights will not only increase people-to-people -people interaction and business relationship between Turkey and the Gambia, but also will further connect the Gambia through the hope of Istanbul with the rest of the world, says Ambassador Ismail. He stated that the initiative signifies the growing trend of the relationship between Ankara and Banjun in all spheres of friendship and brotherhood all the year round, reciprocal visits from public and private sectors of both countries on various occasions further contribute to the already existing good relationship between our two countries, he shared. In a separate development as part of the independence celebration in Turkey, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan presided over the inauguration of the first phase of the new Istanbul airport, which seeks to be the world's largest upon completion in the next few years. The new airport, which lies on the source of the Black Sea, has annual capacity of 90 million passengers with two runways, including three separate airstrips. Istanbul's new airport is set to become a global aviation hub by hosting more than 100 airlines and flights to over 300 destinations around the world. It is anticipated that the new airport will reach annual capacity of 2 million passengers with the completion of all four phases with six runways. For Africa TV News, I am Sajo Sambu. Every day, around 90% of the world's children under the age of 15 years, to be more specific, over 1.8 billion children breathe air that is said to be polluted and puts their health and development at serious risk. Tragically, many of them die. 
The World Health Organization estimates that in 2016, over a half million children died from acute lower respiratory infections caused by polluted air. A new WHO report on air pollution and child health prescribing clean air examines the heavy toll of both ambient and household air pollution on the health of the world's children, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. The report is being launched on the eve of WHO's first-ever global conference on air pollution and health. Every day now, the moment we are talking, almost 93% of the children worldwide are breathing toxic air. And this has terrible health consequences. Not only the fact that 600,000 of them die every year because of lower respiratory infections. In addition to that, if a pregnant woman is exposed to air pollution, then the risk of having a preterm birth is very high. In addition to that, the, the baby will be on a very small weight. If you are exposed to air pollution, prenatal or postnatal, then the risk of having problems with the development of your brain is very important. We know that the children will have a problem with their neuro and cognitive development. And this is critically important. The same for your lungs. If you are exposed while you are a child or prenatal or postnatal, your lungs will be at risk and their development will be soft. We can all contribute to reduce air pollution. We need to make sure that we ensure a healthy energy transition to a cleaner fuels, cleaner fuels and technologies at the household level and in our cities as well, making sure that we have energy efficiency and moving and accelerating the move to renewable energies, among many other things. Evidence is telling us that more than 7 million deaths Premature deaths are occurring every year due to exposure to air pollution. And for that, we need solutions. And those solutions are there. We need to call. This is an urgent call to everyone who can provide solutions because we need to scale up dramatically the response to fight air pollution. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in the World Today Afternoon Bulletin. Join my colleague Fatima Tejaita for a news edition at 8 p.m. Until then, I am Fatima Tejaju. Bye-bye for now. over electoral rigging rocks Zimbabwe as the country Yesterday, after listening to Prime Minister May's assessment of the state of the negotiation <laughs> Why it is our diocesan patron feast day is because the cathedral of our Lady of the Assumption is dedicated. They do not have it in their mindset or in their psyche that we are playing against Algeria. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amal Foundation, in collaboration with the Supreme Islamic Council and IOU, presents Mufti Ismail Mek on his Building Bridges store at the Bakau Independent Stadium on Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. Lecture topic, Respecting Differences. Entry is free. Gates open 11 a.m. Mufti Ismail Menk in the Gambia and is sponsored by International Open University, Paradise Suites Hotel, DBC Quality Design, Freedom Properties, Jumbo Spring Rolls, Jar Oil Company Limited.
Gamsel, QTV, Alphala Radio, I Africa TV, and GRTS. If you don't feel the love in your heart for one another, you are sick. Fear over electoral rigging rocks Zimbabwe as the country Yesterday, after listening to Prime Minister May's assessment of the state of the negotiations, 